Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar or on for the UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days. So we have got quite a lot of precipitation in the north and west but to the south and the east of that precipitation we're in quite warm if not hot air. We could be seeing 30 degrees perhaps tomorrow and widely mid to high 20s into the weekend. So could be seeing a last blast of heat as we have alluded to over the last few videos. We'll then have a look at the medium to long range, look at the GFS, GM, ESMDF and the ensembles as we still have major uncertainty for the last couple of days of August and the start of September. The recurring theme is for high pressure blocking to stay in control but it's the positioning of that blocking and we also have other things that could be throwing a spanner in the works. The GFS today showing a potential X hurricane entering the jet stream which could reel really spin up and give us a stormy period in September. So a lot of lot, lot of uncertainty into September. You know, it is usual uh, this time of year. With climate drivers, the winter climate drivers, start to get going. Low pressure, cold pools to our north start to get going. And it can bring, as I said, a lot of uncertainty through September and October. So I have to keep an eye on it. We could have very warm weather on the cards. We could have very cool weather on the cards. And we could have very unsettled, stormy or very dry weather on the cards. All these different scenarios still uh, still are possibilities, and we'll have a look at what the lo what the most likely um, scenario is today. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe, and remember to follow me on Twitter as well. The link's in the description. So do start on the live radar. You can see not too much going on at the moment. A few showers across Scotland and drier weather for most of England and Wales, but you can see this bit of green here. Now this is precipitation heading in from the southwest and this is a frontal wave. Now if you do follow the Met Office on Twitter they have been talking about this today. A frontal wave is where we have basically a stationary weather front where we have in this scenario cool air from the Atlantic behind, warm air ahead of it and the boundary basically stays, stays stationary and moves uh, uh, sort of the moisture moves along the boundary and what this does is basically create the stationary area of precipitation um, and we're just going to see repeated bouts of precipitation move along this line through Wales, northern England into perhaps the Midlands, East Anglia and northeast England over the coming days. To the south and the east of it we're in the really warm humid air um, and that's giving temperatures as I said into 30 degrees but behind it and where this frontal wave is it's going to be pretty miserable with a lot of precipitation but also feeling quite humid as well as it's the warm air to the south which is fueling it. Now if you put on the temperatures you'll be able to see this quite well. Now we've got very very warm, hot air over the next couple of days in the east and the south. And you can see there is generally more reds in the east and the south, but it will become even more apparent over the next few days with more yellows and blues appearing to our north and our west as cooler air does dig in. So these reds are going to completely dominate the south and east over the next couple of days. Heat wave conditioned really for a, for some for a couple of days with those temperatures exceeding the heat wave thresholds of 25 to 28 degrees, depending on exactly your position but most areas will be getting above their heat wave thresholds for at least a day or two in the south and the east. So very warm, hot conditions coming, but under that precipitation, which only a couple hundred miles further northwards, is going to be pretty miserable indeed over the next few days. So if we go to the UK and we'll have a look at this in detail now. You can see nothing too much earlier this morning, but as we head to when recording this video, you can start to see the frontal wave appearing across South Wales. Now it does spread in, giving precipitation quite widely across North West England, Northern Wales, and you can just see repeated bouts of precipitation moving in from the South West. And that is, as I said, the stationary boundary with precipitation moving along it. Now that precipitation continues to move in and through Wednesday afternoon it could be really quite heavy for disintegrating as it moves north and eastwards. So it's across North Wales, northwest England towards the Liverpool area. That could see a lot of rain over the next couple of days, a good inch or two perhaps in a few places. Beyond that through Wednesday it does eventually disintegrate but still seeing periods of rain along that and eventually the weather front spreads eastwards and what does it do? It produces heavy showers and maybe some storms in the east where we've got the hottest air. You can see these yellows and oranges and reds appearing. So potentially some torrential rain, maybe some thunderstorms through late Wednesday to early Thursday for spreading eastwards and eventually the weather front departs and we all go into cooler air for the weekend but still could be warm. A few heavy showers maybe there and some weather fronts pushing through on Sunday but nothing too crazy. The reason for that is if you have like the 850 HBA temperatures you can see at the moment warm in the south but that 
uh, gets even more well defined through Wednesday. You can see 4, 5 degrees at 850 HP across Scotland, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, 13 degrees across East Anglia, and that's that boundary through South Wales, North Wales, North West England, into North East England, where we see that temperature gradient of about four or five degrees. That's where the frontal wave is sitting and giving us some heavier precipitation. Now, we can get really bad frontal waves, especially um, in the autumn and winter months. We've got the colliding air masses. This isn't going to be too bad, but it still is going to produce some persistent heavier precipitation. Sometimes frontal waves can produce hundreds of millimetres of rain for some areas, especially over the higher ground. And we have seen amber warnings for rain issued over the past few years because of frontal waves. So it is something we do need to always keep an eye on because it can always give very high rainfall totals in very small areas. It can, can cause flooding issues, especially downstream if it falls over hills. But I don't think this will be too much of an issue and we don't have any weather warnings in force at the moment. But through Wednesday, you eventually see that warmer air does eventually peter out to our south and east, potentially peaking through Thursday afternoon at Far East, before eventually we just go more into average sort of air masses, maybe slightly warmer towards Sunday. If you don't look at those two meter temperatures, you can see today it is a humid day, and we're seeing temperatures rise to around 27 or 28 degrees in the Far East across East Anglia. Uh, but widely low to mid-20s. For Wednesday, those temperatures could rise even higher, and by around 3pm, temperatures could widely be 27 to 30 degrees across central, southern, eastern, and southeastern England. But, as I said, towards the Liverpool area, 18 or 19 degrees under that precipitation and the frontal wave. Now, as we head through to Thursday, it could still be warm in the Far East. If you have a look at the 3 p.m. temperatures, still 26 degrees maybe across the south. Actually, the Far East in Anglia, slightly cooler, perhaps some cloud and precipitation moving in there. And into Friday, widely low to mid-20s, but still could be warm, touching 25, 26 degrees. And similarly into the weekend, still could get to around that low to mid-20s mark. Because we are still end of August, we are still in summer, but it's going to increasingly get more difficult, as we have said over the last few videos, to be getting these warm temperatures into September. So if you go to the GFS and see what that is showing over the next couple of weeks. Now if you start on the, uh, if we do start and have a look what uh, is happening on the pressure charts, you can see low pressure dominating at the moment, moving in ahead of it to that warm air behind it, cooler Atlantic air again, providing that temperature contrast, hot in the south and east, frontal wave in the north. Now beyond that, low pressure eventually moves away and we just continue to see bouts of low pressure trying to push in, but generally high pressure is in control. Yes, a little upper troughs there potentially, but again, you can see the blocking to our north across Greenland, Iceland, sort of mixing up the air masses and isolating low pressure systems. The issue we can get with these blocking patterns is, yes, it is a high pressure block, but it can trap low pressure near or over the top of the UK, and that can actually cause locally a lot of rainfall. So it is something we need to, do need to keep an eye on, especially because the details on concrete at this stage but beyond that it generally looks dry low pressure eventually running in around day 10 and could give quite a stormy little period there and we have to keep an eye on something right in the longer term now i did say we do have the potential to see x hurricanes and x tropical systems impacting us through september or october the hurricane season has been very very quiet so far um, when it was forecasted to be above average so don't really know what's going uh, on with that again i'm not an expert in uh, north american weather but um if those do those hurricanes which generally do come along this time of year do start to form they could put a span in the works to our weather and we are starting to see something like that on this gfs run now generally in the longer term you can see high pressure to our east low pressure to our west and a south to southwesterly wind you look at the upper air temperatures quite warm actually we'd be seeing temperatures in the mid to high 20s perhaps with that through early september but look to the far west out of northeast america you see these small little system here with very very tight ice bars now that's an x hurricane or x tropical system that is going to impact the uk now it looks so small how can it impact such large weather patterns in the north atlantic but you see it spinning up and really turning into a proper Atlantic system, and look how it enlarges as it approaches the UK. Now, on this latest run, it's on a southerly track into the Bay of Biscay, and it could sort of move up the channel, giving devastating winds perhaps in the south. Very, very strong. Uh, again, you look at those two-meter winds, look at those reds spiraling around that system. Very, very interesting seeing that. Look at the temperature deviation, warm air wrapping around it, cold air behind it. And initially, you know, it, it is in, uh, very uh, reds in there, very dark reds. So that's initially a tropical system, but then it 
um, turns into a general Atlantic low pressure system as it approaches the UK, really, really spinning up. And yeah, it could be very, very interesting seeing what's going on with that. Again, you look down here, that's 50 plus, uh, 50 plus knots there. And again, I'm assuming it's off the charts for gusts. So sustained winds of uh, around 50 miles per hour. Um, and remember, uh, hurricane winds are sustained winds of 70 miles per hour. So this is a strong system. Again, we must say it's at 384 hours. But it's always something we do need to keep an eye on this time of year because it can come along very, very quickly. Again, uh, forecasts in North America are good at forecasting hurricanes, but they don't really know much beyond five day sort of time frame. And we're looking at a couple weeks time frame here. So it is very uncertain. We'll have to see the system form. And if it does form, then we'll have to have a look at its track and whether it could start to head to the UK. So if the GFS is spinning these up now, we're going to have to have a look at the NHC over the next couple of weeks to see what is happening there. So maybe we'll make some videos on that if things do start to really uh, sort of heat up. If we go over to the GEM, see how that does compare over the next couple of weeks, see how unsettled that is, or high pressure dominated. You can see you can see low pressure in control at the moment, and you're continuing to be in control, but higher pressure building back in. Northern blocking, you can see it extending towards Iceland and Greenland, a generally a bit of an easterly flow. Not too bad. Again, the cooler air is heading into Scandinavia, but most of the UK were under generally average sort of air masses. Could be quite nice, mid 20s perhaps. Similar conditions to what we're going to be seeing um, towards the weekend, where it's low to mid 20s quite widely towards the end of August and start of September. But in the longer term, low pressure is starting to run in. And this is not an ex hurricane, but it is quite a warm, hot system there. It could be a ex tropical system. Again, doesn't look too vigorous enough to be a hurricane, but could be a tropical depression, and that could put a spanner in the work. So, in the longer term, perhaps there is starting to see a signal here appearing some very stormy conditions. Again, it's all appearing on these runs right at the end, day 10 to day 14, but it is something we do need to keep an eye on. It's not too unusual this time of year to be getting some ex-tropical systems pushing our way, really spinning things up, and something sometimes even giving us a direct hit with some quite stormy weather. So we're going to have to keep an eye on this, but at the moment it is speculation, and it is just long term. For the time being, it looks warm and dry the next couple of days in the south and east. Heavy precipitation in the north and ter generally turning more average and drier overall. Still low pressure around, so showers, but northern blocking in control, so nothing too mobile over the next week to 10 days. But beyond that, you can see potentially low pressure running off the Atlantic, guided by those ex-tropical systems. Now, if we go to the ECMWF, see how that does compare. Again, low pressure moving in at the moment, higher pressure building back in towards the weekend and start of next week. Little upper troughs here, though. That high-pressure block nowhere near as in control. So, yes, not a mobile Atlantic flow, but little low-pressure block, uh, low-pressure systems here. So, would still be producing showers and maybe thunderstorms, but nothing, I think, would be too persistent here. Eventually, though, low pressure does run in around day 10, and it does look like we're going to be sat under lower pressure. So, potentially, quite an unsettled end of the runs today to the start of September. Could we be seeing tropical systems moving in? Could it be going really stormy? We'll have to see exactly how it does play out. Uh, and again, it all depends on what happens with these low pressures coming out in the North Atlantic and how some ex-tropical systems could engage with the jet stream, really powering things up. It is something we really do need to keep an eye on. Now, after you finish the video, but have a look at the ensembles, we won't be having a look at the anomaly charts today, we'll just have a look at the line graphs. You can see warm over the next couple of days, that's why we're seeing temperatures perhaps around 30 degrees, some precipitation over the next couple of days in the south and east, perhaps through Thursday and Friday, as we do see that frontal wave eventually move through in the south and east. And then longer term, we still have a lot of spread. Generally, though, temperatures look around or slightly above average. You can see those heat spikes, though. Right in the long run, around the 6th, 7th of September, you see these heat spikes from the GFS, and that is caused by the ex-hurricane, that ex-tropical system, dragging up hot air from the south, but also turning things very unsettled as well. And we've just got a lot of up and down. The GFS goes very warm, very cool, and then very warm once again, that thicker green line. So we have to really keep an eye on this. Could be very up and down next couple of weeks. Precipitation does look likely. Uh, again, doesn't look like it's going to be bone dry, but I don't think there's going to be any crazy precipitation totals, apart perhaps from that frontal wave this coming 
few days and potentially in the south and east through early hours of Thursday, maybe Thursday into Friday for heavy showers and thunderstorms. If we do have a look at the two meter, 10 meter wind, sorry, you can see some higher wind spikes in the longer term, potentially some uh, tropical systems there. But the biggest thing we have to look at is sea level pressure. Now, you can see around the 3rd, 4th, 5th of September, we are now starting to see potentially a bit of a dip. Again, it's not apparent, there's no crazy dip, but perhaps we're seeing maybe 5 to 10 ensemble members starting to dip around that 1,000 millibars, maybe lower. And you can see the GFS operational run there with that real big ex-tropical system approaching it's only dropped a little bit. So even some runs only going to around 1,010 millibars could have an extropical system imminent, um, but just slightly positioned further southwards or northwards for London. So that's why sometimes these charts are a little bit misleading. They only really show uh, when we get a, uh, sort of a, a, a direct hit from a low pressure system, really, because these ice bars are so tight and that's uh, pressure gradient is so tight that sometimes we can see 1,010 millibars, but actually a really vigorous low pressure system. So it is a little bit misleading, but we can see some very, very low pressure systems, very, well, very, very low, low pressure systems appearing perhaps for early September. So we'll have to keep an eye on what happens with this. Let me just zoom out quickly because I don't think you can rightly see the right far right of the screen. Um, oh, it's Well, it's adjusting, unfortunately, but you can see it is generally... Uh, potentially in the longer term, a little bit of a trend towards lower pressure. If you look at the ECMWF ensembles and have a look at what that's showing over the next couple of weeks, similar, warm over the next couple of days, and generally around average, maybe slightly above, slightly below average, a lot of chopping and changing in the longer term, and very similar on the precipitation, not bone dry, but nothing crazy either. And again, if we go over to the sea level pressure, see what that is showing over the next couple of weeks, again, no crazy dip in the longer term, but perhaps a little bit of a dip. Some runs going below 1,010 millibars in the longer term. And that's why I say it is still speculation. But considering all of the runs today were showing something lower pressure involved around that day 10 to day 14, I think it is safe to say that perhaps there is a stormy trend appearing for the south of September that we're just going to have to see how it does develop. But anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you enjoy the warm weather if you're in the south and east over the next couple of days. And do stay safe if you are in that frontal wave. Again, there could be some flash flooding with it, but I'm not expecting anything too crazy at this stage. So as I said, stay safe out there. Um, and we'll have to just keep an eye on what happens over the next couple of weeks with the blocking uh, for the last couple of days of August. And the potential maybe for some stormier weather into early September. So as I said, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.